Hey, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 21 of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. I never realized you named the show and you put my name first, and that's really nice. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, you're welcome. It sounds better. Oh. And of course, but sure, but it's your name sounds better in front. So you're welcome. All right. Yeah, no, I guess that's true. I had to say it in my head. Yes, I think that's probably true. Yeah, because you got the you're rocking the two syllables, uh, which is what people say about you. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the old two syllables. Yeah, one thing I know about that, Alex, is two syllables. Oh, so you don't know him very well at all, because that's not a lot to know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> first blush, real first blush of info. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I got the gist. Two syllables, yeah, I got it, I got it. Yeah, I know this guy. I'll go ahead and write his bio, I got it. <laughs> uh, so the song I picked this week, um, I'm pretty sure is not that good. It's uh, <laughs> in listening to it, I'm like, I'm pretty. And it was funny because I listened to then I listened to a couple songs that are like it, mm -hmm. that, in my opinion, that are like it, that are very poppy in that in that way. This, yeah, this feels like the closest to. Oh, the name of the song, I'll tell you, is uh, I go to extremes. And it feels the closest to him getting sucked in by 80s nonsense yes very much that yeah and because for the most part is one of the things that we like about billy joel is that he doesn't do that he just makes his music right he just sounds like him yeah and the world keeps moving be behind him yeah you either like him or you don't and then the truth is over time you just kind of like him yeah I think um, yeah there I, and I went down to this rabbit hole today um, I was hearing a lot of I feel like there was a phase where he suddenly every song had a lead guitar yeah which was had never been a thing and then all of a sudden it was I didn't know if it was a new guy um, <laughs> or um, I don't know something happened and suddenly it was a lot of lead guitar yeah and background piano. Mm. Um, and it creates a very different sound that is not good in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Why did you, what made you pick this song? I'm very curious because I hate it. <laughs> I think it's a bad song. I'll uh, tell you, I'll, kind of because of that, honestly, <laughs> all right. because it dawned on me how I just wanted to talk about how weird it is those kind of songs are peculiar because this song it isn't even it's a it's a machine is making a lot of the noise right it's a lot of uh it's not it's not an organ it's not a guitar that sound whatever that makes that sound at the beginning of the song oh yeah is just all uh 80s synthesizer nonsense and um and i was thinking about when that happens to bands where they make a song like that and sometimes mm -hmm. then that's all they make from then on it they're on in and they're just garbage forever like uh jefferson airplane <laughs> right is a band that went from being 60s crazy whatever into garbage <laughs> 80s yeah full 80s garbage like they're the ones who i developed a scientific theory of mine which is that any song it turns out it's not true, but this was my theory that any song that talks a lot about rock and roll isn't rock and roll. Yeah, that is a problem. Because we built this city is terrible. Yeah. If you built, yeah, you built that city on rock and roll. Um, what happened? Where is it? It is. That means it's underneath the city that we're looking at. Yeah, exactly. You built, I guess. On, you built the city on rock and roll, but you financed the infrastructure with pop crap. <laughs> with synthesizers. Yeah. Yeah, and reverb. And it's strange to call a song like that rock and roll. It feels insulting. It just what feels about like the song uh, I Love Rock and Roll? 
and that's where I'm absolutely wrong because that song is a banger. And then, and that's uh, who is that? Joan Jett. Joan Jett and the Blackhearts, who are great. Yes. And who remain great to this day. I don't think they record new stuff. They're like like Billy Joel, Joan Jett. I think just tours, but I'll go see that anytime. Yeah. And she just becomes a bigger and bigger badass the older she gets. She's unapologetic yeah. and so cool. That is the best. Yeah. I, the old, old, I shouldn't say old, older lady rockers yeah. are kind of the best because you know they've seen all the shit. Heart, heart, you know, they've. Heart. They're, the vocals are still there. And uh, I think it's Anne who plays guitar for Heart, isn't it, Anne Wilson? Hell yeah. I don't know which. And my God, she still beats the living crap out of that guitar. She's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, you love like that. That's your thing. What? You, the mean, mean ladies who beat the crap out of stuff. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> was, some, the other night I was having dinner with my wife and uh, I said something like, you look very cute tonight because you did. And she goes, oh, shut the fuck up. And I was like... <laughs> and I laughed so hard and then she laughed very hard and then we enjoyed our dinner it was great <laughs> fantastic for some reason she wasn't in the mood for my you look very nice today nonsense <laughs> and she didn't feel like she had to let you off the hook either that's nice no <laughs> great. but yeah I picked this song because partly also because I don't dislike it as much as I used to Okay. I've, I've warmed to it in as much as if it comes on, I will go ahead and listen to it. <laughs> but unlike, Jeff. unlike say, River of Dreams, there's never a time when I go, well, this speaks to me today. Then that never happens. But no. Well, at least, I mean, the only thing I will really give this song is that he's saying something mm -hmm. that some people can relate to. Yeah, uh, it's couldn't be less fresh in terms of a message. Yeah. Um, and one thing that really made me laugh is that going through the lyrics, it's just like loaded with cliches. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, poorly turned phrases uh, and like very shallow metaphors. But then the title isn't. <laughs> That you would, if you read the lyrics and they were like, what is the title of this song? You'd be like, oh, maybe it's like all or none or black and white. It's like, no, it's, I, I go to extremes. Yeah. Not even going to extremes or uh, uh, extreme, the extreme goer. <laughs> it's, a, it's a complete sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Very weird, always in a song title. Hey, here's an artistic observation. If he did this on purpose, amazing. Because Billy Joel goes to extremes because he writes some of the best songs. <laughs> <laughs> and this one. Yep. Um, yeah, I, and it just fascinates me when a, when a band that you know is good or, or an artist who you know is good does a thing like this. And then we'll get into the lyrics, but let me ask you a question about it. Do you think this feels to me, doesn't this song feel like Hey, you haven't had a hit in a while. You need something poppy. That's what it feels like. It does feel like that. But I will say most of that album sounds like this. Yeah. It is like uh, charging, like that sort of hard charging lead guitar, rock and roll style yeah. stuff. Um, and I don't know that there were hits on this album. Were there? What album I mean, was this? Isn't this Stormfront? Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, that sounds right. Shameless was a good hit. But yeah, it was in, you know, Down Easter Alexa was its own kind of hit. Yeah. For people like us, I suppose. So I guess a real grab bag of like good song and probably, you know, and like okay song with some charm to it. And then this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't and, know what that... Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't picking it just to make you suffer. I was actually interested in it. 
because it's just i don't know i just because i really like billy joel and this is just such a pretty bad song i think and that, yeah do you think it misses by a lot or do you think it misses by a little in a lot of ways well it's a really good question you know what i think i think if you reproduced this with a piano because i hear he's pretty good on piano uh-huh if you reproduce this with more organic instrumentation it'd probably fix it a lot it would be an interesting song to do slow yeah um true because you know i mean what i get from it is this claim that i go to extremes it's either all or nothing but everything about the song is very all right <laughs> there's not much nothing it's well, a lot of instruments playing at the same time here's the argument here's, here's the argument though the song is all and it kind of amounts to nothing <laughs> yeah Good. again if he did it on purpose <laughs> right <laughs> I, I, my, when I do stand up sometimes you'll see a nightmare act and yeah. just the weirdest act and me and a few other comics will often say you know if they're doing this on purpose they're Andy Kaufman <laughs> they never are they never are no they're always just bad at what they're doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah if he, you have, there's a an art to doing it bad great yeah and people don't seem to know that. I there was a uh, you can't an act, just be bad. Yeah, there's an act I saw once called the Diamond Twins, and every time they were going to come on stage, I would make sure other comics. I was like, "You gotta watch this," <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> they would they do this thing that some comics do where they contradict themselves from joke to joke. Like like as an example, a comedian will go. Oh man, I, I can't get laid. I'm such a loser. I never go on dates. He'll do that joke. And then a joke later, he'll be like, I was having dinner with my girlfriend and you'll go, hmm. <laughs> right. And uh, this, this was, she told a joke wherein she was a virgin and like 30 seconds later, she was a slut and it was great. <laughs> but the how they did a Halloween show where one of them put on a mask and the other one turned around and went, huh. And as if she didn't know she had just put on a mask. It was so great. Oh. I I I would pay to see them. They were so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'd what? pay 40 bucks and I'd go online and pay the fee and have it be a hundred. Wow. I'd go I mean, that's <laughs> high praise indeed. I would go see them do this nonsense and then if i could do a question and answer um hey do you know what you're doing that's what i would ask <laughs> yeah was that on purpose how about that <laughs> and that other thing because this doesn't ah uh, yeah did did you get laid between jokes because originally <laughs> all right uh, all right let me do the i'll do the first part Call me a okay. joke. I le I let me let the folks know. I'm going to start doing the lyrics. <laughs> uh, call me a joke. Call me a fool. Right at this moment, I'm totally cool. That's eh, not bad. Sure. But it's fine. It it's, makes sense. Um, clear as a crystal, sharp as a knife. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm in the prime of my life. Sometimes it feels like I'm going too fast. Um, it is a lot of words to say so little, isn't it? It really is. It's, you know, two giant cliches or three, yeah. really, if you count prime of my life. Yeah. Um, also, immediately defensive. Yeah. Um, the whole, you know, I read it as like, the darkest reading of these lyrics is like, oh, this guy is an abuser <laughs> who is uh, defending his propensity to abuse people. Yeah. Like, hey, I don't know why I do this. I go to extremes. Yeah, and, and that's what you love about me, right? No, 
No, no. I had to go see a doctor recently because of that thing in my eye that you hit me with. <laughs> clear, clear as a crystal. That's not even a real cliche. It's so cliche. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, yeah, it's a flipped around crystal clear. And, and also, yeah. by the way, a lot of, you know, upon, re, upon reflection, mm -hmm. a lot yeah. of crystals aren't actually clear. In fact, most yeah. of them aren't. You know what a lot of them are is uh, sharp. Yeah. You could have used that instead of the knife. That's true. You could have said clear as a knife, sharp as a <laughs> <laughs> Clear as a window, sharp <laughs> as a crystal. I'd at least be listening at that point. That's like, wow. oh, I don't, wow, what's happening here? Yeah, yeah. Is he aping they might be giants at this point? What's that? <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. It didn't sound like anybody either. So it wasn't the tribute excuse. Yeah. Oh, that was the other thing that I was interested in. Thank yeah, that was the other reason I picked it, because you're right. It doesn't really sound like any of his, it doesn't sound like the Billy Joel sound. But it also doesn't sound like, oh, I don't know, Depeche Mode or whatever. Right. It's just some dumb pop song. Yeah. I think it's it has 0% R&B to it. Yeah. Which is always, I feel like, a, a knife's edge for him. Like, it's very safe to be like, I'm doing like 20% R&B and the rest is me. And you're like, great, you'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> There's structure in place. You know how to do this. We've heard it a million times. Do another one. Yeah. And this one is like, no, lead guitar, baby. <laughs> like, well, good luck. <laughs> uh, this is the bathroom break song. If you yeah, play it when I'm at your concert. <laughs> yeah, this is a, yeah, this maybe is a better answer to that question. Actually, no, because the original question was, it's a song you like, but you don't mind going to the bathroom. This one, you're like, I don't even have to go, but I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Play it twice. Because <laughs> I'm uh, backed up. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I will, I'll jump in. Yes, please. I don't know how long this feeling will last. Maybe it's only tonight. Darling, I don't. Darling is weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, in the previous verse, you said you were totally cool, but now you're using darling in conversation. So I think maybe you are Eddie Albert on Green Acres. <laughs> darling, I don't know why I go to extremes. Too high or too low, there ain't no in-betweens. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like somebody else wrote this. <laughs> like he knows better than uh, this. Yeah. He's not a great lyric writer, but he has like a a floor on how bad his lyrics are usually. And he has there are times when he's even great. Yes. And mostly he's serviceable. Yeah. <laughs> And this is just a mess, like a rough draft. Yeah. And I, you know, in thinking about it, the other thing is there are songs where you may not be a fan of the lyrics, but musically you could listen to it all the time. And yes, absolutely. And it solves and whatever the, whatever might be wrong with the lyrics, but this just doesn't have that either because it's just a, not an enjoyable sound. <laughs> no. And particularly because you know what he can do because he's a real musician. Like there's so much he can do and that he's not bothering to do. Yes, this is like a producer took over. I was like, I'll do the music. Yeah. He's like, no, no, he's got 11 albums. He can, he can figure it out. Yeah, I could see that. I could see this being, uh, well, this could be a, I got to finish it and I needed one more song because it is a B-side. Yeah. And, uh, oh no, wait a minute. It says the B-side was When in Rome. I don't know. Ooh, that, song. that song's better. Yeah. And if I stand or I fall, it's all or nothing at all. <laughs> I will say that rhymes like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I stand or I fall, it's all or nothing at all. The next, the next line should be good call. <laughs> <laughs> it's becoming Eminem. Yeah, <laughs> if I stand yeah. or I fall, it's all or nothing at all. Yeah, well, that's yeah. one of those great, yeah, that's that. That's a really good rhyme, and it's also not a good rhyme, man. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. It has to do more than just rhyme to be a good rhyme. Yeah, and uh, he's back to calling you darling, by the way. Then he goes, yeah. darling, I don't know why I go to extremes. <laughs> <laughs> and this next line is now delighting me. Sometimes I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sometimes I'm shot. Sometimes I don't know how much more I've got. That's not even extremes. That's three examples of you being tired. Yeah, that's all from one extreme. So maybe I'm headed over the hill. Oh, man. So that's one more. I'm, and maybe I've wow. set myself up for the kill. Is that a thing? Do you set yourself up for the kill? Don't you set someone else up for the kill? Or someone sets you up for the kill. I, I think you can say it this way, but you're right that it seems feels clumsy. Um, you can set yourself up to make the kill, so I think it makes sense. But usually, you set somebody else up first. I think you're right because most of the time, what it is is you set somebody up to be killed, mm -hmm. or you set up some set somebody else up to do the accomplishment which is the kill you can do it that way but right in this case he's setting himself up which is in which must be a good thing right that's what we should it should be <laughs> set myself up for the kill are you who's getting killed i guess is the important thing yeah so if he's setting himself up to be killed then i think is what he means to say okay. The only reason maybe I it's a uh, it could be that it's super awkwardly phrased to demonstrate how tired he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired, I'm shot, I don't know how sentences work. <laughs> I'm over the hill. Yeah, this is also this is your excuse for going to extremes. You're 40. <laughs> yeah. I turned 40, I can't control my temper. <laughs> What do you expect me to be reasonable now? I'm so I, tired. Yeah, my feet kind of hurt. <laughs> People who are 40 who complain, go fuck yourself. Yeah. God damn it. I remember 40. I'd love to be 40. <laughs> and by the way, I knew it when I was in my 40s too. So I'm not that guy. I'm not the guy who used to, I love being in my 40s. Yep. I'm still that guy. I'm like, ah, I'm not 65 yet. So I'm not complaining. Yeah, I don't complain too much, but 40 year old, you complain. Oh, I'm gonna, boy, I'm gonna curse you out at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not too tired. Now, you were saying earlier, this sounds like an abusive guy. Well, yeah. here we go. Tell me how much do you think you can take? Until the heart in you is starting to break. Another. Translated into Russian and back into English. <laughs> yeah, the dude. heart in you. Maybe. Yeah, how much do you think you can take before you uh, leave? Maybe Google Translate wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, yeah, that's. I don't think it's ever a good sign if your partner turns to you and like, "How much of my bad behavior do you think you can handle?" <laughs> Let me just lock this door and ask you again. That would be the best. That would only work if it was a first date and you were like, all right, I want to be honest with you. Right. I have plaque psoriasis. Now, is that going to bum you out? <laughs> That's different. It's um, moderate to severe. <laughs> That's a good first date is what that is. <laughs> it's just, I want to be honest. <laughs> if I wear sweaters it, I, around my wrists get all red. Oh, my uh, a friend of mine said, uh, she's a lady comic. She says, the one thing you never want to hear on a first or second date in a text is, uh, I stopped off at Chipotle on the way home. That's her thing. She says, 
You wait until we're dating for a while to share that. If this is the second or third date, I'm not going out with you again if you feel like that's information to share. <laughs> that's way more than fair. I Yeah, I think she's on to something. <laughs> she's also personally successful and doesn't need to tolerate your garbage. <laughs> she's doing fine. Huge help. Uh, let's see. I think it's you now. Uh, how much do you think you can take until the heart in you is starting to break? Thank you for the heart location. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like it will. Referring to the heart? I think so, yeah. Sometimes that's, oh, it's so gross. Yeah. All that is gross. All right, darling, <laughs> I don't know why I go to extremes. Too high or too low, there ain't no in-betweens. You can be sure when I'm gone, I won't be out there too long. I don't know what that means. Okay, yeah. You know what? When I scream at you and stomp out of the apartment, I'll be back pretty soon. Yeah. In a better mood, I think is what that means. Yeah, I believe that's referred to as cold comfort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, you can be sure when I'm gone. This is, by the way, the only thing the song has going for it is it is an earworm because I can hear how it's sung so yeah. clearly, and I'm not pleased. <laughs> um, I won't be out there too long, darling. I don't know why I go to extremes. And man, here's a here's a unique um, metaphor: out of the darkness into the light. <laughs> oh, leaving the scene of the crime. Either I'm wrong or I'm perfectly right every time. Ah, perfectly right. I do like saying perfectly right. For some reason, I like that because that feels. Yeah. Um, Sue and I were having this chat earlier about how um, people, most notably Dr. Phil, would always ask if you uh, would rather be right or happy in your relationship. Yeah. And we both said, it's not a real question because I'm right. The thing I said was right. Yeah. So if I say, if, you know, I say, oh, Sue, the capital of Vermont is Montpelier. And she says, no, it isn't. Right. And I go, you're right, it's not. I'm not happy now. I was right. Yeah. Um, it's a fake argument. Yeah. Well, this. from a fake doctor. Yes. Fair enough. Yeah. A very real lawyer and gun nut. Yeah. <laughs> um, for, for, being, yeah. Uh, for being a pretty decent person who has done a lot of good, Oprah still has for, a lot to answer for. <laughs> It's true. It's true. I mean, you take big swings. I guess you make a lot of errors. Yeah, she gave us Dr. Phil, Dr. Oz. Most of the doctors she's given us have been problematic. Yeah, yeah. I, she's good for a lot of things. Doctors is not one of them. Yeah. I would not get a referral from Oprah. Um, she also gave us Ianla, who I love very much. Yeah. Ianla yeah. Van Zant. She's done, yeah, she's and she gave uh, she gave all of us cars, right? <laughs> that was nice. Um, yeah, let's look at this shit. <laughs> Out of the darkness, cliche. Into the light, cliche. Yeah. Leaving the scene of the crime, cliche. Either I'm wrong or I'm perfectly right. Yeah, a bent cliche. Yeah. I guess that's the only reason that line almost sticks out as being okay, because it's the one that's at least a little different. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's like a, a cliche improved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With a little frosting. Yeah. Um, we should note that this is also the bridge of the song. Yeah. Where it changes into a different song that's also not good. Yeah. <laughs> but, and sounds a lot like the first song. Um, but he is singing much higher now, so I don't know if it's, uh, yeah, like the yelling. Sometimes I lie awake night after night, 
coming apart at the seams. Okay, so, okay. so th this I kind of sometimes, sometimes doesn't belong in the sentence, I lie awake night after night. <laughs> yes. So that's just yeah. worth pointing out. Sometimes I lie awake night after night. Sometimes I get a good night's sleep night after night. Would not, I, yeah. would, what have you, you told me nothing. And yeah. then coming apart at the seams, I don't know why this occurred to me is if Prince had written this song and he wouldn't have, but um, he would have spelled seams S-E-E-M-S and he'd be like, ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, that'd be a fucking coup right there. Yeah, see, see, I meant something. There's some subtle yeah. going on that you couldn't possibly get from listening to it. Right? Oh. Yeah, rest his soul. Yeah, I loved Prince. I will say I like uh, eager to please, ready to fight. Yeah. Why do I go to extremes? That, more of that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That little, what would you call that? Is that a couplet? I don't know what that uh, is. Yeah, sure. Yeah, eager. That to seems to me like uh, two, those are extremes, but they're not cliche extremes necessarily. Yeah. You know, they are opposite behaviors. Yeah. That a lot of people certainly exhibit both of those. Yeah. You know, I think that uh, I have done the people pleaser thing, but I've also been furious all the time while doing it. <laughs> so I get it. Yeah. It's like extremes that can live together inside of you at the same time. Yeah. Um, which is, I think, a more interesting proposition than most of what's going on here. Yeah. I mean, that's why religion exists. It truly does, because we're able to hold ideas in our head that can contradict each other. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd have to bail out of your religion. Yeah. You're like, oh, no, I like to uh, masturbate. So goodbye, Catholicism. <laughs> but people are like, no, I'll do both. I can do both. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty great. And I like, by the way, because I imagine that that's pretty much your impression of a young Billy Joel telling us he can masturbate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. I did put a little Long Island on it. Yep. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I, I'm, I, I won't eat fish tonight, but I am jacking it. <laughs> yep. What, I'm a good Catholic. No, look at it, fish. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. I jerked it, but I had some hake. <laughs> uh, and if I stand or I fall, it's Ugh. all or nothing at all. Oh, we're back to that, huh? Uh, darling, I don't know why I go <laughs> to extremes. And now this, man, you are running out of steam on lyrics because now you're like, darling, I don't know why I go to extremes. No, I don't know why I go to extremes. <laughs> The old, uh, that's how you used to end uh, TV episodes by saying the line twice. Remember <laughs> that in the 70s? Give me an example. I'm trying to picture it. I don't know, Timmy. I don't know. <laughs> Credits. Right. That kind of thing. I don't know why I go to extremes, Timmy. Hey, Timmy, <laughs> did you know I go to extremes? Timmy, uh, wake up. Oh, God, Timmy. <laughs> Man, if the rest of the song, okay, I fixed the song. This is the, how the rest of the song should go. He goes, darling, I don't know why I go to extremes. No, I don't know why I go to extremes. Don't ask why I go to extremes. Because I don't know why I go to extremes. But darling, I go to extremes. Just constant. <laughs> and then the song is like six more minutes. Uh, just radio fade out super slow. Hey, does this have the radio fade out? I'm trying to remember. Or does it have a solid ending? I feel like it's a radio fade out. Yeah. I'm basing that on reading the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> trying to remember. Because I, it would almost make me mad if it had a solid, well thought out ending. Because then you go, <laughs> why do that? Why do you bother? That's what you get right. <laughs> why don't you start with that part then? And we'd be done with this whole nonsense. Oh. This is fucking too high or too low. There ain't no in-betweens. And then we're back to, you can be sure when I'm gone, I won't be out there too long. 
you're he's bipolar yeah quite literally bipolar darling yeah. i don't know why i don't know why i don't know why i don't know why out of the dark into the light now he's a malfunctioning robot <laughs> sentence fragments from earlier in the song either i'm wrong perfectly right i don't know why error error <laughs> Either I'm wrong, perfectly right. If if you didn't know what he had said before, changes the meaning too. Because either <laughs> I'm wrong, which is perfectly right. You're correct. I'm wrong. You're perfectly right. I'm wrong. I feel like take another day, think about it, talk to someone about why you go to extremes, get some answers on it, then write that song. If you don't know why, then what what are we supposed to do? Yep be sad for you <laughs> this song is almost fixable too now this is a real billy joel observation now it just dawns on me because you're right you need a couple more days of writing this this song would have benefited from him going okay well it's about me but instead i'm gonna make it about me talking to a guy who goes to <laughs> right and i bet that would have fixed it it couldn't have hurt. You divorce yourself from it like you do with the other stuff. Yep. And uh, now... Then you can change Darling to Buddy, which is yeah. great. Buddy, I don't know why you go to extremes. And then he would ha then he would naturally then have an observation about how that might be for the woman dealing with him going to extremes, which would give him, give him, give him an avenue for at least two lyrics yeah involve another character yeah maybe this is the time you finally bring that comic back <laughs> you know, oh yeah from la the one who went to la yeah that guy <laughs> <laughs> oh i hear he's doing all right <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh i wonder if he's doing zoom shows that guy Oh, I'll bet. Yeah. One of the first. Zoom shows, I got to tell you, I've always said they're not as good as doing real stand-up. Lord, when I got to do real stand-up, I was reminded, yeah, they're not nearly as good. Yeah, I'm sure. Dude, I got on, I did stand, oh, talk about extremes. I hadn't felt that endorphin rush in over a year. Yeah. Walking down the mountain, I had so much energy. I felt so good the best. I'd just done a set and I was great. I really was. I did, had a good set. It's not a braggy thing. It's just, I had a really good set. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Then one or two of the other comics didn't, which always makes me feel great. <laughs> so, okay. It's not just the room. Yep. Yep. And I was, and you know, I had that thing where, uh, I don't know. I always like it when I'm the most professional act on the bill, when people are like, ah, oh, that guy. I love that feeling. Yeah, right. What's he doing here? Yeah. Why are you here? And I'm like, because I made a lot of bad early just choices. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Go hanging man. around, you, you sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was amazing. Uh, this song is not amazing, so I brought it back. <laughs> uh, I'm just rereading the first uh, little verse again. I think it's funny that. This is a song about how he goes to extremes all the time. But the whole first verse is about like, I'm fine right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have this small window where I can sing you this song about my problem. Yeah. <laughs> before I flip out or start crying. Right. <laughs> call me a joker, call me a fool. Right at this moment, I'm totally cool. I'm, I'm clear as a crystal. Yeah. Sharp as a knife. I feel like I'm in the prime of my life. These all sound like symptoms. Yeah, but yeah, for sure. This is how a lot of people describe bipolar. It's like, oh yeah, you feel like you're in the prime of your life. And then all of a sudden you're screaming. I don't know why. And I now for real, sleep. Billy Joel definitely in his youth dealt with mental stuff. He's been very open about that, right? That's true, yes. Depression. Yeah. and uh, uh, But who knows, uh, you know what the DSM was up to in those days. Dep he says depression. Yeah, but for sure, even, you know, I 
have had depression. And if you've had depression, you know the difference between depression and sad. And it's there's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh, I think a little bipolar goes hand in hand because I definitely, I've had that experience of just like, yeah, everything's great. No, I don't think it is great. I think it might be the worst. <laughs> I've definitely been in that spot. Yeah. I just haven't written 15 cliches in a, in a row to tell you about it. Wouldn't you, if you wrote this, just sit down and go, oh no, I, I got to take some of these out. Yeah. I mean, you you write stand up all the time. I'm sure that you were like, oh, this joke isn't good. <laughs> Let me get rid of this one. Yeah. I'll, I still have some good stuff. I'll work around it. I'll find a new connector. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And th I have jokes, you know, I've material that I've sat on for a year before I thought it made any sense in front of an audience. Um, yeah. And now I've had jokes, of course, luckily, luckily that's not every joke. You'd never have an act, but, yeah. but you just are like, okay, well, this one goes in a drawer until I can figure out, cause I know what's funny about it to me. Yeah. And this is, yeah, this definitely going to extremes needed a rewrite or two. Yes. Uh, two solutions. I'm telling you two solutions that I honestly think fix it. You're not the guy anymore. You're talking to the guy or about talking the guy. To the guy. And then you get to do the thing where you're superior yeah. and you tell people what to do and you're smart and they're and, dumb. And which you, you love. Do, yes. And you do this. You do this. I don't know why you go to extremes. You put that in there. You get to do the funny thing. <laughs> uh, I listened to Los Angelinos today where he does <laughs> that for most of the song. Uh, and it's great because... I think he's trying to be Latin, but he sounds like a, an Italian a mama. <laughs> but God bless. And then the second solution, honestly, honestly, do it with a piano. Yeah, slow it down a little, do it with a piano. If you slow it down, it, obviously it gets longer, right? Yeah. So now you go in and take the cliches out. Yeah. It's the same length, but it's good instead of terrible. Yep. And it's about your fix. Body. Yep. Hey, and can you stamp fixed on the screen? And look, Billy Joel, this song is perfect for your thing. You can have a guy, you can have a motorcycle song in this one, sound in this one too. Yes. This guy's going to extremes. You do yeah. a motorcycle sound and then the sound. Gunshot. You got your breaking glass. Yeah. But here's. Here's an idea. You do it a little different. You got motorcycle sound and then the sound of a nice economy car because you've got oh. two extremes. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The breaking glass and then the sound of uh, someone buying a window. Yeah. Buying a new yeah. window. But breaking glass, sign of a, sound of a guy paying his bills. What's that sound? Yeah. Like, you know, a good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sound of a guy, uh, you know, making dinner for a woman who's on her way home. Yeah, and it's a nice dinner. It's not an extreme dinner. You're relaxed. Yeah, it's, there's no microwave ding. <laughs> I want to hear uh, the pilot light come on. It's a regular old dinner, but the dessert is like three-layer chocolate. That's extreme. I had to get up early to start this, you'll say. And she'll say, will you really go to extremes? Yeah. And you, you say something about, I hope you can understand, tolerate my going to extremes in this cake and then it doesn't feel like abuse yeah. now yes. then it's less threatening i hope oh, you don't mind yeah. i went to extremes i rented your favorite movie <laughs> which is I have to work tomorrow are you crazy god this is getting to be a really good song now yeah and less scary yeah which yeah. is worth something they the billy joel here's the thing you do too because i don't think you've ever done this you do You've done the, uh, I don't know, Italian voice. Now you do a funny lady voice in this one. Oh. You do, I don't know why you go to extremes. You do that in the song. <laughs> or get Cindy Lauper back. Do we have to do everything? See, now it's my favorite song. You do all this stuff, it's my favorite Billy Joel song. That's and our how challenge. How extreme is that for it to go from one to the other? That's their How favorite. extreme is it to cover your own song from 30 years ago <laughs> to satisfy two weirdos? Yeah. Uh, for your new album, Billy Joel, 
fixing stuff. Every artist should do that. Uh, that's a really put, put out albums of your bad songs that you fixed. Don't put out albums of good songs and think you're fixing them. Don't do that, police. No, don't do that. Yeah. And don't, yeah, and don't put out albums of other people's good songs. Yeah, don't, yeah. No. Did you ever hear Sting put out an album, a concept album called The Soul Cages? And the concept of the album is you won't enjoy this. That's the concept. <laughs> I did not ever hear that album. It's not good because um I'll steer clear. He does he takes like songs of his and then makes them bluesy, but they sound like a stand-up's interpretation of bluesy to me. They sound like uh, whenever you hear some dumb stand-up go, this is a blues number about taking a poop. And you know, just like, okay, you dummy, I don't how, how many minutes mm -hmm. does this guy get? Oh, God, okay. All right, I got to warm him back up. <sighs> Give it up for that guy, everybody, anyway. <laughs> I have to introduce him? Oh. Yeah. I'm pretty yeah, good, by the way. I'm, I'm good at pretending the last guy was good when it suits me, by the way. Well, that guy, great. I'm really good at that, by the way. You're very supportive. Yeah. Which means you can also fake being supportive. Indeed. If need be. And sometimes it's right. called for, and you think in your mind, I'm doing this for the audience because me going off on why did we have to watch that won't help. Yeah, no. And a lot of MCs don't know that. Yeah. And they yeah. will say, that was terrible and I hate that person. And then <laughs> yeah. the whole room gets <laughs> tense. Nobody likes that, even if they're right. There's this, yeah, there's a woman who used to do stand up. She's now just a writer. I shouldn't say just a writer. How gross is that? But she, she used to do both. Now she only does one. That's what I mean. That is fair. Um, and she was right to not do stand up anymore because she was, she constantly hated everything about it. <laughs> That's a good time to get out. I liked watching her because it was funny to me. I'm like, who's making you do this? But she would host an open mic sometimes, yeah. and it was the worst open mic because after every comic, it was like, "Yeah, oh, boy, yeah, I haven't heard jokes about that topic before." It was like that kind of stuff. Great. <laughs> this is Janine Garofalo you're talking about, right? Uh, this is a woman who I think wishes she was Janine Garofalo. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah there is that vibe. Oh, I oh, loved yeah. Garofalo back in the day. I loved her. Oh, same. Love her now. She's still great. She just don't do stand-up, I don't think. I mean, she did it. Yeah. Yeah, she was, yeah, she was very unique in a very cool moment. But what show are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. Uh, real quick. Yes, what's happening behind you? Uh, mannequins. Well, right? Yeah, they are mannequins, and but I'm I'm hoping you're impressed. Uh, <laughs> I mean, everybody else is. Oh, uh, I, am I impressed by their Halston dress? Yes, indeed. And the people that you knew at Elaine's. Oh yeah, I was great that night, wasn't I? I as I recall, I was very charming that night. <laughs> <laughs> Big shot. Yep. Um, I I do love that song for its very dated references the Austin dresses and the people that you knew at Elaine's yeah um we walk by Elaine's once in a while or where it used to be I think it still exists yeah and it does not look like where you would go in your limousine full of cocaine anymore they were all impressed by your pocket watch <laughs> <laughs> and your bicycle with a big wheel <laughs> Uh, big shot i love that hey. song i love me that song there's a trivia question that um this is a, a fun one because you could probably figure it out if you don't know it okay um billy joel released a live album called songs in the attic right those songs were recorded when he was on tour but on tour promoting what album Glass houses? 
glass houses. Thank you. Ah, I did it. Yay. Yeah. And Sue made a connection that I don't think is was intended, but um, he was promoting an album named after a house and uh, uh, released another album about an attic. Oh. Now, I've seen the glass house. There's no way it could have an attic. Yeah. It's a real house in uh, New Canaan, Connecticut. It's somewhere near here. The house that's on the cover of Glass Houses, which I think we talked about, but who the fuck knows? <laughs> and There's no that, way to know. Yeah. After 21 episodes, I don't, yeah. I don't remember the first time the Jim character was introduced, <laughs> for example. Like it's, episode nine. It's starting to come together. The character is starting to make more sense. Yeah, yeah. It's a little more consistency. The writing is really picked up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just yeah. writing. <laughs> <laughs> I like how in Glass Houses, he's throwing a rock at it, right? Yeah. I like that cover. I like that cover. I like that it also, in a very Billy Joel way, doesn't quite make sense. Because uh, it is a reference to the expression, people who live in glass houses shouldn't throw rocks. Yeah. Clearly, the character he's doing on the album cover doesn't live there. No, yeah. <laughs> so, it's just a, a weird biker Yeah. who's throwing a rock at this house, which uh, is no relation to the expression. It's Billy Joel in that great jacket, his, his hair in full effect. Yeah, it's pretty peak. Yeah. It's peak, peak Joel. Yeah. It's he, the phrase. <laughs> I think my dick just fell off when I said that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, I won't be needed here anymore. <laughs> Doink. And now there's a, there's a pocket protector there instead. That's <laughs> right on your, <laughs> your way. Well, wow. my dick was. Uh, uh, well, make great. the best of it. <laughs> <laughs> that is ridiculous. That's funny. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, so this, you uh, picked I Go to Extremes, I, it, which made me think that on the next album, I don't want to do this song, but on the next album, I think the next album, there, yes. There's a song that contradicts this song entirely called Shades of Grey, which is all about how he never goes to extremes anymore. <laughs> and only, he can only he can see other people's arguments. When I look to the enemy line, all I see is Shades of Grey. So I was poking around and then I listened to that song and I was like, oh, that one's bad too. <laughs> so I don't want to do that one. But on that album, there's also a song called No Man's Land. Okay. That jams uh, and is lyrically interesting and a little bit politically, uh, socio politically interesting. So I think we should do No Man's Land. Yeah, I, I think doing two, I don't care for it's in a row is not a good idea. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I went to see Paul McCartney in concert, I think I told you this at Yankee Stadium. He did a very smart old rock and roll man thing, which is he played one classic and then one you didn't know, and then one classic and one you didn't know. And he never put two things after 1990 back to back. Oh, yeah, smart. He was like, ah, oh, you're a smart uh, rock and roll person. Yeah. Because the worst thing that could happen to you that night is you were bored for three and a half minutes. <laughs> and then you got Long and Winding Road. Yeah. And you're happy again. Well, there's a reason. There's a reason he's Paul McCartney. <laughs> Very much. He, he pulled that off. Yeah. He, yeah. He's a, he's a funny duck because I think had George never gotten sick and had John never been assassinated, I still think Paul McCartney will, would have ended up living longer than anyone because he's got a real good attitude. Yeah. And that'll get you pretty far. That and some, some veganism. Yeah. Doesn't it, hurt. It ain't for me, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Veganism would kill me, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody needs that. 
I'm sorry, animals, I tried. I really tried. <laughs> right, but now it's about self-preservation. Yeah, I, mean, I could have not eat at all. I can't, that can't be my thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that was not a good look for you. Yeah, my wife will bring stuff home and it'll be vegan. And then I'm like, well, I'm not even trying. So uh, you enjoy that. I good for you. I understand you're doing that. I don't want to go to the hospital again. <laughs> I'd like that you have to stand up for yourself by eating a cheeseburger. <laughs> this is a real nice uh, setup you got. It's a good place to be in. You're right. That's actually a good position to be in. Oh. My, my friend in his 50s who has to eat meat to stay alive. <laughs> Great. The funny thing is, when I think about it, that's what my fucking dad did. Yeah. And he lived a long damn time. Yeah. Nobody's parents had any good eating habits. And uh, my parents are still alive. They, my dad smoked two packs a day yeah. and ate garbage, like literally ate out of a garbage can. <laughs> and he is 84 and thriving that's right i forgot you're if i'm remembering your dad was sylvester the cat right he would take out the yeah. little... <laughs> he a lot of he ate a lot of fish skeletons yeah and he was obs <laughs> obsessed with eating one bird it's not smart i don't know if that ever worked out let's go get a different bird yeah there's you're by the trash there's pigeons probably yeah you're a shitty cat How? and a shitty dad. <laughs> yeah, you're a shitty dad, Sylvester. <laughs> I think that's a good note to leave on. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I talked to him first. I didn't want any succotash. I don't know. It was a bad end. I should have cut. We should have. We should have stopped <laughs> sooner. But anyway. That's well, there's right. no way to fix it. Nope, because I don't bother. <laughs>